Missouri Congressman Jason Smith, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Mr. Chairman, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for being here this morning. It's great to be with you, Maria. So this passed. Uh, what did the two Republicans who did not support it have an issue with? And what happens if Joe Biden vetoes it? You know, I haven't spoken to the two Republicans that had issues with it, but I would just assume that one has always been opposed to foreign funding, just period in general, not the fact that it's Israel, it's just others. And the other one has a huge desire to make sure that we address the southern border before you address any other country's needs. That's what I would say those two are. What's so alarming, though, Maria, you look at almost 200 Democrats voted against aid to Israel. And they say that it was a flawed bill. And the reason why it was a flawed bill is because it was being paid for by cuts to the IRS. Think about this. There's more than $60 billion left with IRS funding. And we're asking for roughly $14 billion. And that IRS funding is used to target working class Americans. In fact, that additional funding is projected to increase 600,000 more audits to people making less than $75,000 a year. I think it's a win-win. Wow, that's incredible. 600,000 additional audits. What is the president trying to do with all of these IRS agents? I mean, don't we need more border agents? And by the way, your comment about the border, I was under the impression that the border does not need any more money. What the border needs is a policy change. So why are we going back and forth about money for the border? You know that the White House is only going to use any money for the border to create more housing for the migrants and, and, and more benefits for the migrants. That's not what the Republicans want. Maria, you're exactly right. It's not about more money for the border. It's about the right policies for the border. Right. Remain in Mexico, making sure we secure the border. And those policies, they have to be included in, in any future funding bill because we have to address the southern border. So it's not that we are wanting more money for the southern border. We are wanting the policies to be made and enforced appropriately to secure our southern border. In regards to those IRS agents that you mentioned, Maria, they need more IRS agents to implement the the Democrats 1099K initiative that's supposed to take, a pl take place in January. And that requires any inflow or outflow of more than $600 of individuals' Venmo accounts or PayPal accounts that they're going to be monitored now by the IRS. That's going after working class Americans all over the country. Well, that's incredible. So any transaction of $600 or more, you're going to get scrutinized by the IRS. And that's why he wants all of these uh, IRS agents. Meanwhile, Israel's waiting for the aid. You know, we know it's going to it's going to drop dead in the Senate. Right. I mean, isn't that true? So what what happens with the aid to Israel? Do you expect Israel to get any of this money anytime soon or will it have to be tied to money to Ukraine? I sure hope that the Senate will do the right thing and make sure that we we provide this funding to Israel. But my projection is, Maria, that you'll see the Senate that will link Israel, Ukraine yeah. and probably the kitchen sink um, and then try to send it over to the House of Representatives. Wow. I want to switch gears, uh, Congressman, and ask you about the investigations that you're working on. Uh, now that you've got the speaker in place, Speaker Johnson also told reporters this week that the final decision on impeachment articles against the president is coming very soon. He told me first on Sunday Morning Futures that the House is moving aggressively on this. Uh, and after the House Oversight Committee revealed another check to Joe Biden from sister-in-law Sarah Biden. This is from 2017, and it's for $40,000. We've got the timeline from the Oversight Committee. The timeline shows the money trail. It starts with a Chinese company writing, uh, wiring a $5 million check to a Hunter Biden company, one of those LLCs that they set up. Then that company sends $400,000 to another Hunter Biden entity, another LLC, which that LLC sends $150,000 to a company owned by James and Sarah Biden. Sarah then withdraws $50,000 from the company to put in their personal bank account. And then a few days later, she sends $40,000 of that check to Joe Biden. So let's go back and look at where we started. Uh, $40,000 is exactly 10%. Of the original $400,000, which went to Hunter, Congressman, what should we take away from this? Well, Maria, the, the facts are the facts. And clearly we see that that $40,000 is 10% 
10% to the big guy. The documentation that's been coming from the IRS whistleblowers and also investigations from Senator Grassley are, are following a line with these bank records that Jamie Comer's been having. So we're following the facts. What we know all along is President Biden said that he knew nothing of his son Hunter Biden's business dealings. We know that that's not true. He said that he was not then involved with his son Hunter Biden's business dealings. He was involved, but he wasn't just just involved. It looks like he has been been a beneficiary, in fact, with all these, quote, loans. Who loans $240,000 to their brother in loan repayments when you're a sitting member of Congress? I, I don't know too many people, but apparently Joe Biden's a person. My question is, Maria, is let's look at his tax returns. The tax returns that Joe Biden has disclosed when he was running for president does not provide any evidence that he received any interest income on any loan. So why is he not reporting that on taxes? The president needs to show these loan documents if they in fact do exist, which let's see if they exist. And why did he not report it on his taxes? That's also a crime. Yeah, it's a really good point. He's talking loan, 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 and the media is trying to cover for him. CNN is already claiming that they have seen records that show Jim Biden received a $200,000 wire months before his quote-unquote loan repayment to Joe Biden. But even they are admitting that the records they've seen, quote, do not prove with absolute certainty that there was, in fact, a loan, Chairman. They're going, they're, they're going through hoops to try to find out any documentation for the loan. They do not want to admit that there has been influence peddling going on for Joe Biden's entire career. Well, it's so disturbing that this $40,000 most recent loan, loan payment, the money came from a Chinese company. And President Biden, when he was running for office, said that his family has not received any income from the Chinese. We know that not, we know that is another lie. It's consistent of what the president continues to say one thing and we discover something totally different. And then there's all those pseudonyms. There are so many emails, thousands and thousands of emails where Joe Biden is communicating with Hunter Biden and he's using all these different names. There was there was reporting this week, in fact, more than 82,000 pages of pseudon pseudos, those those fake names that Joe Biden was using while he was vice president. Who does that? And why do you do that unless you're trying to hide something? And, and why is he including Hunter Biden on official business? That's exactly right. And not just including him on official business, the two IRS whistleblowers highlighted um, in the 700 pages of documents that they gave our committee that we released just last month, that in fact, it's official acts. For example, <laughs> you would see um, President Biden meeting with Mexican billionaires in the Oval Office, in, in, in the White House, and then you see Hunter Biden flying on Air Force Two with the president to meet with those same folks in Mexico. Wow. You know, I, I don't know what's a bigger story, the actual corruption that you all have been able to uncover or the media's complicity on it uh, and how they're also covering up for all of this, as are the DOJ and the FBI. Look at this most recent hit piece on Mike Johnson. Uh, the Speaker of the House. Now the, they're focused on his finances. And believe it or not, look at this uh, Daily Beast story. They're upset that Mike Johnson does not have a lot of money. OK, does the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, have a bank account, writes the Daily Beast. Uh, and they're going through uh, uh, talking about how much money he has, what he has in the retirement, what he doesn't have. Mike Johnson doesn't have any retirement savings, they write. He doesn't own a single stock. He doesn't have any assets at all. He has less than $5,000 in his bank account. He's got a two hundred fifty to $500,000 mortgage, a home equity loan, and a personal loan. So what's his retirement plan? Is he going to lobby? Uh, can you explain this to me? What, this is the hit piece from the Daily Beast right now. Maria, this is just a prime example where a lot of the liberal media is so out of touch with America. More than 60 percent 
More than 60 percent of all Americans cannot afford a $500 emergency expense. They live paycheck to paycheck. They barely make it by. I think it is great that Mike Johnson represents working class Americans. The Republican Party is the party of the working class. He represents a working class district, one of the poorest congressional districts in the nation. You look at the 10 most wealthiest congressional districts in America. They are all represented by liberal coastal Democrats. Republicans are the party of working class, the people that are living paycheck to paycheck and just trying to provide for their family. Mike Johnson's reflective of that and how dare them to be so out of touch with real America. Uh, how ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they really got him with that piece, uh, th this hit piece from the Daily Beast. Unbelievable. Uh, Chairman, good to see you. We're going to be watching your work. Obviously, it's important and impacts all of us. Jason Smith, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Good to see you, Maria.